CT side. G2 will start on the attacking affair. And we know how much energy a pistol round win can bring. Well, Modesty's going to take it out towards Long. Brokey and Kerrigan to defend initially. Little flash over. One's already crossed. Modesty not there with the timing, doesn't want to test anything. So over towards mid with a smoke up to allow their passage. Catwalk will be the name of the game, and it's at Kerrigan. It's at Rain on defense. Instantly to be tested. The ferocious force of the storm in Rain gets himself that first headshot. Stewie down. Nico follows, and Rain just massacres them as they try and run through Cat. Oh, that's beautiful. Rain is so precise. We've come to see that time and time again, and once more delivering a headshot angle behind the barrels that G2 couldn't handle. Such clean shots from Ray. Just has the perfect amount of cover to destroy this G2 attack up short. It was a simple call from G2. And he didn't even get close to the plan. So it's going to be full Glocks out here for G2. Not wanting to go for the force by instantly. This should allow FaZe to settle into the first two. Interesting hearing from Nico in an interview he gave yesterday about the fact that Hooksy has been kind of the assistant coach for G2 over the last tour a few days of this tournament. Sitting with him at the late hours once the tournament wraps up for the day, talking about some of the mistakes they made, giving them some new strategies, some ideas, some pointers. And I'm sure that's been a, a huge help for Nico yeah. in terms of taking these in-game leader reins back. Hooksy, Hooksy still having a lot, of, uh, a lot of input and being able to help out from a distance is obviously great to have. I think the other part of the interview that's been uh, really cool to listen to is Taz talking about, uh, and even next a little bit talking about Stewie and what he's brought as a stand-in, some mid-round calls, mid-round decision-making, which has always been one of Stewie's strong points, and being able to provide a calmer atmosphere. Yeah, surprisingly vocal still. And it's a nice clean-up here for FaZe again, not losing a single player in the second round of play against Glocks. Anticipated result. But here we go. We're going to get into the gun rounds. G2 buying into the AK-47s. Yeah, no kills yet for anyone on G2. They haven't found a single frag yet in these opening two rounds. But now that should change. Modesty is going to go down for the scout Ooh. instead of an AK-47. He wants the scoped weapon on Dust2. Three SMGs still in play for FaZe on the defensive side. So a really strong round for FaZe here would be a nightmare if you're G2. A strong Long hit for Nico. Gets caught by the flash. Has to get away. Carrigan. He's down low off the back of that initial engagement. He's down to 14. Strong defensive opening for FaZe towards the A-bomb site. Four players here trusting Rops on his own to defend against any kind of a B-rush. They called the bluff. G2 didn't go for it. And now back towards middle. Once Long has been stalled out, that defense can shift. Hunter and Stewie holding down the Xbox area as one clears up catwalk. Grenade will land behind Stewie. But no punishment yet. G2 do not want to keep forcing that issue up, Cat. They're going to drop a little further back now. That bomb. It's towards the long side in the back of Monacy. Could go either way with this now. Stewie's been really proactive for G2 as a stand-in in kind of the entry duties. He's been, he's been a big space creator. He's involved in about 40% of their opening engagements. He really wants to press that issue. And whether he wins or lose him, he's had some impactful entries throughout this tournament. But he's always creating space for the guys coming behind him. And he's got to find Kerrigan out to the left of the doors. Smart position from Carrigan, considering the low health. He goes into the aggressive play, though, and Stewie will get an opening kill presented by Carrigan. So, G2 out long. Brokey will be the next test here for the T side of G2. He's only got the MP9, and he mows down two with it. Brokey does great work, in fact, to take Nexa and Stewie out of it. And Monacy doesn't have the weapon of choice, so he drops a little bit further back, allows Brokey to walk into him, and Hunter had already moved through short. Yeah, that defense is obliterated. Smoke for the cross, a couple smokes for the cross. Rops is hot on their heels out towards long. There could be a timing here. If he can pick off one player pretty clean, pretty quick, he can be activated in a 1v2. Bomb being planted, and Rops chills. Yeah, Hunter's looking for this long play. He has his eyes set on that, so information will be picked up early. Rops is just sitting back. Nico's coming towards him, and he looks like he might get close to rounding that corner eventually, but Rops just hoping he can catch a G2 play, maybe going a little too far. And that's information now picked up for G2 that Rops is currently positioned at long, and they shouldn't let this round get out of hand. Yeah, no interest in actually going forward after the fact. So G2 have their first round on the board. Really passive round, late long take, and Modesty's going to take away the rifle at the end of the day. G2 get all five.
And it's, it's the problem, I guess, of those SMGs. You see a couple of pushes. Kerrigan pushing in towards Long. Brokey with the, Brokey out towards Long A. Actually gets some things done in tandem with Rain. One more push in middle. And you start really losing that defense as it tries to get into a solid position. So a uh, tech issue, as we could see up on the stage. Yeah, Nico's mouse seems to be having a bit of a problem. Not ideal. No, nope, so he's uh, have a look, look kind of broken. So <laughs> hopefully that's a quick fix. Give it a nice clean, get that sensor. De-dusted, Jason. I want beer for you too, Dallas. <laughs> I want you to have all of it. We always have some great signs here in Dallas. The creativity is on point. Yeah, they love it. They love it. It's interesting. I've, I was, I'm just having flashbacks. I've, I've played. I, I've seen Stewie play in tournaments where his mouse broke in the middle of a game. <laughs> it could be a very frustrating experience. So, G2 is gonna. Hopefully, that mouse can get fixed, and G2 can be centered for the rest of this match. It's a it's a very easy tilt factor, the mouse breaking three yeah. rounds into a game. Yeah, that, that is definitely a bit of a tilt factor, one that's not easily fixed either unless you have a replacement on standby. So hopefully we can get that resolved as quickly as possible. Seems to be a little issue here for Stewie. That is his favorite number. Dallas, you've been having a good time so far. We're early on, I know, but... It's only day one of the playoffs as well. We got plenty more action coming in. Last year, we had one of the greatest games of Counter-Strike B played in CSGO of last year. And uh, I'm hoping we get something similar to that in CS2. Yeah, Dallas has created some, some fun matchups in the past and some exciting matches on this stage. And it's become a very cool event for the Counter-Strike scene. Oh, we thought we were maybe getting a staring contest from Carrigan. A little bit subdued, perhaps. He's a little bit of a showman, right? He's always getting the crowds on his side, but I think even he walked in today and was like, nah, I'm beating that. Yeah, I can't, I, no, I can't handle no, that one. Not worth it. <laughs> but you know how it works. A phase get through G2. You almost want a, the team that beat your team to, to get to the end. Oh, a lot of signatures there. Well done. Collecting them all. Even got Donk in there. All right, well, let's do this. While we have a little extended break, Dallas, come hang out with us a little bit. Are there any um, Spirit fans in the crowd? All right, how many of you enjoyed that Vitality victory earlier today? What about 9Z? The ultimate underdog. <laughs> Kind of crazy they're here at this point, Jason, and that's they're in the semifinals. They're waiting in that next game already, and that is going to be a fun time to see if 9Z can continue the miraculous run. Yeah, if they run. can do it in front of the crowd, if they can do it on that big stage. Yeah, it's still, I mean, that that's going to be a very, very intriguing matchup to watch. 9Z plays the winner of this series right now, Phase G2. Got the fast pass to the semifinals. FaZe would have loved that fast pass to the semifinals, yep. but it was taken from them by Spirit, as it was in Katowice. They met them in the Grand Finals, and I'm sure FaZe are hoping they get a similar result here in the U.S. of A. Well, Your parents love you. They do. And even if they don't, everybody else in here does. It was great listening to that documentary that we uh, that just got released from ESO, and sure. um, it was great hearing one player, uh, one, the coach of Neo in particular. I thought it was great to actually get some input and insight into some of the calls that Neo comes up with. He can he came up with real good calls in the middle of games, Jason, and a lot more tactical input uh, that early on for Phase. It was great to see from Neo, and I'm sure in big games like this, you're going to be required again. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he should get all the credit in the world. I mean, in terms of legacy of, uh, in the IMs, yeah, he's going to be up there. But two, he's shown himself to be a very, very solid coach coming into phase for good reason. I know Yanko's always big on talking about how impactful and how, how good of calls he has during low buy rounds, coming up with game plans. I remember that photo. We all remember that photo. So long ago.
The last time Stewie played in the playoffs of an Intel Extreme Masters was in 2020 in Katowice. There was no crowd at that one. So I'm sure he's absolutely loving the fact that after all these years, he's walking back out to face a home crowd. Yeah, he mentioned living in the moment. Got to be enjoying this. Big fan of that hashtag. <laughs> Let's do, what about one more time? I saw uh, I saw Jordan Gilbert in the crowd earlier. Any nothing fans out there in Dallas? <laughs> that is commitment. <laughs> Bringing his worst nightmares to Dallas. That's why Carrigan isn't looking out into the crowd today. Yeah, he doesn't like it. <laughs> Oh man, that's beautiful. <laughs> Filled to the brim on a Friday afternoon. We are just a few moments away from getting back into this game. Thank you very much for being patient with us. But yes, we're right in the last double checks uh, to make sure everything's all good to go. And then we'll be right back into it. So a little bit more patience, please. And uh, we'll get the headshots flowing any moment. Seeing a sign out there saying if Stewie is going to get more than 2k. Well, he's up to one already. He's and halfway there. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't end in dust 2k again for Stewie. You'd imagine not at this point. I mean, look, all the conversation and with someone of his, his pedigree, he's going to get better each and every game. It's been a long time since he had to compete in a complete tournament at this, at this level. For Stewie, it's all about finding his, his ways to have impact. Which seems to be what he was made for, what his game was made for. Was just, just targeted Those little impact, impact moments, yeah. Speaking of, you know, we, we've spoken a lot about G2 and for good reason, but for that of FaZe, there's so many players in that, that squad that, that bring impact in most decisive moments of the big games, but I think Brokey is one of them that just has so many memorable moments, especially in last Dallas, in that Ents game. Brokey was, he was on fire. He was having a great time last year, and he's hoping for a similar performance here this year in the USA. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's had an incredible start to the year, Brokey. He's been absolutely phenomenal for yeah. FaZe, even even at times when they've kind of gone through a couple periods of struggle. He's otherwise, he's, he's been rock solid for the squad, but yeah, you go down that list and it is just every single player is going to deliver you something once you get to the pressure matches, once you get to the playoffs, once you get to these quarterfinals. And it's a huge task if you're G2 to overcome that. Now it's a big sports week here in Dallas. We've had the Mavericks play, the Stars. But what's the what's the USA chant that already gets going, Jason? That's like your biggest sports chant here in this country, isn't it? You want to give it a you want to give it a try? Well, you can give it a go. I'm not I'm not from here, Jason. It, <laughs> goes, I think it's pretty easy. Maybe the crowd can help us with the USA chant. All right, Dallas, help me out. Do it for the Mavericks, baby. <laughs> USA, USA, USA. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Even Kerrigan loves it. Even Kerrigan can feel the vibes. No, he just, he's getting PTSD right now. <laughs> he thinks he's back in Boston. <laughs> that is funny. That Shout is... out to whoever came up with that idea. You guys have nailed it. You've absolutely nailed it. Kerrigan's probably looking at that right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Every time we come back to Dallas, Jason, there's always uh, an exciting <laughs> sign. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Why, why is there no beer, Jason? <laughs> I can vibe with that. <laughs> Nico, number one IGL. Well, not historically true, is it? But sure, that, maybe at this event. I think it was number one NA IGL, which might actually be true. Yeah, it might actually be true, yeah. All right, so still waiting on a couple things. Just a few little things. Who but is you know, Nico's barber? I don't know. Who is Nico's barber? Well, I want to find out too. He's got a pretty sick hairstyle. Any naffers, twist fans out there in the crowd? <laughs> Well, if you can't get beer, I think that might be a bit difficult. 
Yeah. Baby uh, steps. Usually would assume so. Ooh, a headset's back on, Jason. Headset is back on. Oh, Stewie's got his headphones on. Hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Monacy hasn't, though, and doesn't look like he's intending to do so anytime soon. Nigo's still working on fixing things. Oh, there he is. Yeah, great to hear from uh, Elige last night. We got to see a bit more of him. I've seen a lot of fans from the uh, arena. They went to the Itchel TV confirmed live show. It was great to see uh, all the fans in a more of an intimate environment. We got to hear a little bit more from Elige. And I'm sure we'll be very disappointed he's not able to get this opportunity to play in front of the stage this year. But uh, it has been a rough time for complexity in Dallas over the last three attempts. Yeah, it has been. For, for all of NA teams, really. But we still love him. Still a big fan of Elige. <laughs> Well, Rops as well, one of the early adopters of CS2, one of the best players. He's just chilling. Been interesting to watch his year as it's kind of progressed as well. His phase have kind of always made it to those finals, stumbled a little bit. And Rops has kind of dropped out of that top three players of CS2 conversation. Yeah, he was definitely very quick to adapt and uh, still always up there. The floor of phase is extremely high. And we see them, even when they're not looking great coming into an event, you can never really doubt them. They always find a way to get the players into the finals. And it's only the, the top teams in the world that are able to get rid of them. They really are called the final bosses for a reason. g -Stu. It's going to be tough to obviously come in to the arena with all the energy, the crowd backing you. And then you'll be at a point, Jason, where, you know, you have had this moment where you have to cool down for 10 to 15 minutes and all that initial adrenaline <laughs> starts to come back. And, oh, damn, okay. Well done, shout yeah. out, yeah. That was a good one. There's a lot of um, double meanings in the signs in Texas. Sure. <laughs> Seen even one for you, Jason. Well, Dallas, this is crazy. This is the 100th IEM. We've had a lot of them, but the Intel Extreme Masters in Dallas celebrating its centennial. Absolutely spectacular. Oh, and as a bit of a reward, we're coming back into the game. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you for your patience. And we're back in round four. G2 had just picked up their first round win before the break. It was a bit of a bonus for FaZe Clan. They had SMGs and Stewie charging out long, looking for that initial attack. Okay, behind the blue bin, Flash going forward. And, oh, the smoke criminal comes charging right through, but it is just one for Stewie. Yeah, but look at all the space he's created. Kerrigan's going to get some back. Blinded. Good teamwork from FaZe. Oh, Stewie wanted that second kill so badly. Reigns brought low, but now it gets real tough for G2. Pinned down in pit. More defense has arrived. That is a classic Stewie maneuver, charging out through the smoke at long. But G2 in a tough spot, 3v4 at the moment. So much time at least to play with, but Carrigan getting the adjustment made, he's boosted up to take position at short, and that bomb gets ever closer to the A side. That smoke will start to fade away soon. Yeah, but this is nice from FaZe. This is really smart what they've done. Rops is playing close mid. They've got two players on catwalk, so they can't control long. They're going to allow G2 to cross, but they'll have players in position to respond to the problem inside the bomb site. Rain at a slight off angle with low HP. Ooh. Takes a risk, taken down. And now Monacy can get range with that AWP. Yeah, Monacy taking the life of Rain quite swiftly. Brokey peeks into him, and Monacy will fall this time at the car. G2 down to two players. 33 seconds remaining in this round, and Brokey's come back into the shot. It connects, Kerrigan cleans up, and FaZe will turn this into a round victory. Three to one up on the board. Yeah, triple kill from Kerrigan. He's the impact player in the round. Stewie had ran past them. They didn't realize there was one more ready to creep around the edge of the smoke. He was never seen. And he really negates the strength of this play from Stewie. Finding one more kill, slowing them down, grabbing numbers. And at the end of the day, there's no utility for G2 to cross. They're forced back to Glocks, back to pistols, back to the Stone Age. And Brokey's AWP is going to have impacts.
Five and one star here for Brokey. And that all pink battle is going to be an interesting conversation because you mentioned earlier the fact that there, there is that competition for the top player in the world. Who is it going to be? I think Monacy is always in that conversation at the top with Donk right at the moment. And it's Monacy, Donk, and Zaiwu. That's yeah, the conversation, the that three is of them. Exactly. And so Monacy, so many times throughout that group stage, is, was just saving G2's ass. I mean, this isn't like a highly per strong performance from G2, right? They've had a pretty low team rating across the board to get into the playoffs. And Monacy had a lot of pivotal moments to get G2 to this point in the competition. It's been like that all year through G2 struggles as Monacy just has been at, at various times hard carry mode and especially now in Dallas as they've had Stewie as a stand-in. Nico switches to the in-game leader and as you'd expect he's experienced a statistical drop in his performance so not providing as many kills as he normally does and those are going to have to be found elsewhere and Monacy frequently the guy to step up to do it. Up towards catwalk we go but once again it's no utility going into Brokey's op and we saw how that worked last round. This is going to be a shooting gallery. This could be a nice shot for Brokey. No problem in dealing with Nico. 30 seconds remain. And a missed shot from Brokey. We'll rely instead on Reigns AK-47. And he'll have no issue cleaning up the rest. So four rounds now for FaZe. It just keeps getting better for them. And we've got to see some life out of G2 soon. Because this could quickly turn into a big half from FaZe. Yeah, this is their map pick. Need to do a good job in this first half, not get themselves into a hole, especially in this situation. You want to be able to play with some momentum. You want to be able to build something up to overcome the obstacle that is phase. And so far, they haven't been able to get it started just yet. Modesty's back on the up. Plenty of utility for the entire round for G2. Smoked across. Rops will get over towards the B-bomb site. He's solo, though, because all of phase or elsewhere. And they haven't given him reason really to call for support over. This round, someone's going to shift. Brokey's going to come back towards middle pretty early on to be in position to help out. So G2 just defaulting their way through middle. Brokey with a slight gap to watch that cross, and he nails the shot. Not enough damage to bring Nico down. Pretty damn close, though. Three <laughs> HP left on Nico. That's a spectacular shot from Brokey. Oh, that grenade is beefy. Stewie brought down to 48 health off the back of that HE's placement. Phase in a good spot in terms of damage done to the G2 attack. Minute 10 seconds, still a lot of utility for G2. And a good shift in the defense as well. The AWP was spotted in middle on that shot. Brokey immediately runs over towards a ramp. It's frozen with an M4 who steps into middle to fill that gap. And he can help Rops out at the B bomb site as well. They're suspecting the possibility of a mid to B split as G2 have thrown that smoke, but it's a ruse. We're going elsewhere, and it's carriage. Give this position away earlier because he actually got aggressive. Well, he's going aggressive again. This time, it's Monacy to punish him. Carrigan walks right into the scope. G2 are first blood. But look who's lying in wait. It's Rain, undetected, hiding behind the box. Senses his time to go out, and it's just one kill for Rain. Nico finds him in response, and G2, 4v2. No shot, surely, here for FaZe. So they're into the bomb site, bomb planted, and FaZe will save their weapons. A second round here for G2. Twice now, the long A adjustment from G2 in the mid-round has netted them a kill on Kerrigan. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't lost any of that attitude. And Brokey just has nowhere to adjust once Kerrigan goes down. Stuck at car with an AWP, nothing to do. It's going to be 4-2. to two. And FaZe will be able to put together another buy, drop some weapons over, and G2 have one more round to break through and decimate this economy. Success for G2 has come at long A, it's come at the catwalk, pinching into the A bomb site. That's the two rounds they have so far. Well, we're getting into the last, the next round, round seven. Early pressure from G2 out towards long, but they don't commit. It's a strong retake, three players for FaZe. Hold on to the position, and G2 sense it. So Nico's calling the team quick up catwalk. That's the reaction to heavy long defense. And he's found plenty of space. Yeah, there's loads of space available here for G2 up short. 
Rain is going to get the information that they're using it with that Molotov. He can call that to his teammates that they're deep towards Cat. Minute, seven seconds lost. Still so much time for G2. And getting short control this early opens up a lot of options to them. Well, now they don't have to go up against Brokey's AWP. He's only got a single M4. Robs takes a little bit of damage, so finally he's getting pressured. That's Hunter being a little bit more aggressive than usual in that position in upper tunnels. Smoke execute up short, drop down from Stewie into the smoke, he comes right through! Rain can't stop him, Frozen has to reply and he'll do so swiftly. Frozen gets that double without issue, but Monacy has to trade it for G2 and does so. Brokey with a big shot, this time through the smoke, and there's 30 seconds left as Carrigan springs his flank. He's done damage on the Monacy, he's left on 8 health, and he'll come right through that double door. Bomb is down for G2, and Monacy. Position known, and he's waiting for that CT play. He knows he's got one trapped in Brokey. Oh! Monacy looked away, and Brokey gets away with it, so it's all on Nexa. I don't think you'll expect this position. I don't think you'll expect it, or will you, Kerrigan? He's got, he's got another clutch, and G2 has three. Nexa just keeps clutching in Dallas. He did it twice in the opening game in the group stages. Some say that's the only reason they were able to make it this far. And Nexa does it again on the stage. It's absolutely unbelievable. It looked like Carrigan was going to clear him. It looked like Carrigan had that locked in. And a beautiful headshot on the drop down. And that's the round they needed. That's phase out of money. And G2 can start getting some easier rounds under their belt. A great chance to tie this up. So far, it's so good for G2. He's well, getting a little worrying with a shot to phase had. We're building up rounds early. And G2's gun rounds have been very impactful. And you're getting what you wanted out of Stewie, right? The fact that he's able to just get that one opener, get, create that space, create that chaos. Or that drop down into CT. If Stewie does that, <laughs> that's what he needs. And next is clutching. Like, we got a we got a great recipe here for G2 to get phase a competitive game at least. Looking that way early on. Going to be tied up 4-4. Four to four. Brokey and Frozen, the only two remaining with Deagles. Huddled up in middle as well. Going to hear the tick of the Molotov and an easy kill for Nexa. And now they know the position of Frozen. Money's still going to be a little wonky for FaZe. G2 have them right where they want them to put a good T-side on the board on Dust 2 to start this series. And a timeout used by FaZe. And if you're FaZe, you want to stop this momentum before it starts to build. You don't want to allow G2 to start heaping rounds on this T-side of Dust 2. And so they get Neo on the mic. Neo and Taz up against each other on the stage here in Dallas at the 100th Intel Extreme Masters. That, just so much history involved in the coaching department. Entirely former teammates have played together, won championships together. Both of them looking to make the semifinal stage. Now opponents once again as they were so long ago. Modesty staring deep down. Fires off a shot, smoke to cover. Rops is gonna slide through it. He's gonna make an aggressive play. A middle tired of being bored over at the B bomb site. Here's Stewie running through a smoke again. And Stewie once again opens up. First kill is good. Rops to trade on that aggressive maneuver through middle as Monacy cut out from beneath G2. So a 4v4 established off the initial engagements. That's a brilliant find from Rops. We way to get aggressive once Kerrigan goes down. Rain is going to hustle back to a new angle inside the site. He's got three coming in this direction. Nico, Nexa, and Stewie, who's far back deep. Covering for any kind of a fight, any kind of a peak that comes. Yeah, Rain just waiting, now decides to strike around that corner. Couldn't quite get a comfortable fight, but going through the smoke this time is Nico. Cleaned up from Rain, though, inside of the site, and he's having a fantastic game at the moment, Rain. He's up to double figures, and Hunter slipped through the B-bomb site, but it's been checked. Robs will detect it and dink up Hunter in that process. There's still a lot of time, but Bomb is on the other side of the map, and he's taken way too much damage here. Yeah, I, I mean, damage is good. So far, they've got three kills in the round. Money's still going to be a little bit awkward for FaZe, though, so this isn't all lost for G2. But if Hunter manages to just get one more somehow, but likely just going to save the AWP, although Brokey oh, would have heard yeah. that. He Bro would have heard that pickup. You don't want to let that AWP get into the hands of Monacy for free. But you also don't have the money to chase. They might just have to let it go. 
So 30 seconds, we'll sit and wait at this stalemate and see if Brokey and Rain work up the courage to go hunt down the AWP. Five to four, another big round from Rain. He's started off on a heater, and this is one of the most experienced players when you talk about stage games and big game moments. Rain's pretty much always there. And another important round picked up from Rain because it looked like the trading might actually be enough there for G2 to get into the site until Rain put an end to it. I mean, Nico steps to that smoke and gets goes one for one, gets one kill on two players there. But I mean, that Rain kill was the important one to get, to have access into the bomb site and he's able to just kind of stand with impunity. This was a beautiful push from Rops, a nice timing on it, but Rain again, just so strong, tapping away, finds Stewie as the second kill. And they get back into a very slight lead, but they have to invest everything in this round. G2 again having them on a breaking point. They ease into this next round. That's spreading across the map. Two in tunnels, Hunter and Nico. Apply pressure lower, and they cleared it out. They know that no one from FaZe has played aggressively. Down lower, this makes Monacy feel more comfortable to push up short with Stewie. And G2 going through the motions of this initial map control, and FaZe in fighting them. They're giving them all the space they want, and that flash is good. Gets Rain off the angle. Stewie saw one in CT spawn. Didn't have the fight, so didn't commit to anything, but he just said Rain was on the boxes. He's dropped into spawn. Molotov out towards Cubby. Nobody's home. Frozen's a little bit closer. Hunter, another round where he chooses to be oh, a little bit more aggressive than usual. He's going through. He's running right through. He can climb up on top. And that's a little steal away. He tries to get back in time for Frozen. And he was damn close to it, but Frozen takes the kill back for the side of G2. And now they're looking at this A play. Kerrigan ran all the way back from long. Those footsteps would have been heard. And they can call out that he's going to be over on railing. So you have to be ready for this. 35 seconds, though. That's all that's left for G2 to make their final play forward. And into this A-bomb site, they will charge. Carrigan forced into Goose. He's got Brokey out long, but for the time being, it's pressure on Carrigan. He's forced into the open, but he's found one spot of safety, one sanctuary spot. Will it work out for Carrigan because they do not check for him? They thought it's clear, but Carrigan gets away with a double, and now he's going for all three. He can't stop Monacy. Monacy now switches out to the AK-47. Discards his weapon of choice, but time, time is off the essence. He's now gone for the fake into the headshot. He needs a kill right now. Oh! Monacy with the last second. That's all he had in the pistol. Oh my God, it's just incredible. The switch to the AK, back to the kill right at the end again. In the group stage, he had that one bullet headshot. In the playoffs, he gets the one second clutch. This guy is a master of time. Frozen is probably just assuming he's committed to the plan, because why wouldn't you with only four seconds left? He's taking his time, knowing he'll have the jump, but that is a wonderful find from Modesty. And Kerrigan's gonna have to be really stoic, because he had a hell of a round, a hell of a job defending that A-bomb site. Got a mic issue at the moment, we have to work through. They're fixed quickly. We're back into the countdown. Five to five, and once again, phase out of money. With that little one round victory, it brought some of the losing bonus back down. Not a pretty place to be, and G2 have gained control of the economy in the later stages of this half. And that clutch from Monacy could do so much for the repercussions of the rest of this half now for G2, and they're looking for six. Nico, his first point of contact, Damn. he's taken out by USP. Stewie looks to clean it up, and he'll do so on two. Finally taken back by Rops. But a 2v3 now, and it's quite a lot of damage done from just USPs, Jason. G2 have to try and recover this mess, and Monacy is going through those mid doors. If Frozen hits the shot on the Deagle, if he stops Monacy from getting around this corner, it could 
be an absolute disaster or on the cards here for G2. Yeah, and I, this is a great play from Rops as well. He fell back directly to middle, knowing the long presence was going to force G2 out mid. Modesty still not yet spotted by that Deagle. Frozen not peeking out, trusting in the crossfire. Now coming. Oh, no, he's got one. Modesty ain't getting out of that situation. And FaZe still one right back. That is ridiculous. The initial play, the USP got the first kill of this round. And Nico's going to be very frustrated that he was the first player to go down for G2 in this one. Here it is for Brokey, and then Frozen finds the element of surprise, and Rops just swings out that smoke. There's not a second of hesitation, and you get one second clutch from Monacy in the previous round, and you feel what it's like to lose a round that you should be winning in the next. Yeah, that you, yeah, you had to capitalize on that. That's a huge missed opportunity for G2, but it's got to be an emotion that they're pretty experienced with. Rops is going to have a very fast flank up lower to dark. Stewie's running with this. He's going first. Frozen's got one from the back of the bomb site, and Nico's waiting for the flank, but Rops just checks it. This guy is just so methodical. And he's able to move right through. Modesty and Next have to pull this one back, and they're doing so right now. 2v2 on the cards now again for G2. These rounds are so close, so hard to call. And it's the last shot of this half, so FaZe are going for this retake attempt. And around the back is Carrigan. Coming through the tunnels. Rain is not making any secret about it. He wants to pull that attention away. He wants to set up Carrigan for the chance to come back in from the tunnels, but now he's given away his position. Time will start to tick here for FaZe. They have to clear that side out, and Carrigan and Rain combine. The absolute perfection, the experience will prevail, and it will be a seventh round. What a first half of Counter Strike we've got here. G2 competing against FaZe.
glimpses of the history of the Intel League Street Masters. We're live in Dallas for the 100. 10 to 15 minutes and on the arena they went to the HL TV confirmed live show it was great to see Dallas who's ready for America I know I'm gonna see all you there baby right down the road 7-5 for FaZe and we're live into the pistol marginal lead for FaZe and it's Carrigan and Rain in this historic game. Uh, we're able to close out that last round of the first half. Now Pistol will kick off here with Rops in the tunnel. He'll drift downwards to join Rain. Could be a good timing here for Hunter. If he decides to move forward, he would be able to get in behind the forces of FaZe that have moved now into lower. But it looks like that bomb will be joining them towards shore. It's Carrigan carrying it. An A split coming in. Nexo is going to be critical. The pit player, if him and Stewie can hold on to long, it gives them so much breathing room at the A bomb site when eventually Rain Rops and Kerrigan start moving up. Monacy will be at railing to defend, so Stewie's the swing player. Monacy first, and he nails his shot. They cross on by. Monacy a second, absolutely destroying the attack through short. Nexa keeping them pinned at long, and Stewie gets involved. Stewie comes in with that second headshot, and G2 swing right back. 7-6. Pistol here in the second half goes the way of G2, and they can start to build the CT side up. Oh, that defense worked exactly like design. Modesty takes first contact. Stewie's chucking flashbangs for him. When he gets the kills, he comes out to help out his buddy next uh, out at the long pit. Good swing. Confident swing and a solid headshot. Yeah, Stewie is loving that one. It's got to feel nice for Shui to get a couple of kills up on the board here as well. You know, you always, as a competitor, you can come in with confidence, but there's probably a little bit of the back of your head wondering, I haven't done this in a while. You got to feel like, we, had, we, we saw a couple of those like head scratching rounds from Nico where he's like, he's usually very sharp and he's taken over some in-game leadership to it, so his attention is a little bit more split, but I think a lot of these tech issues are probably throwing him off his game. He's had the mouse problem, the mic problem a couple of times. See if he gets into the swing of things on the CT side. Had the final kill on the pistol, he's up to four frags with his team just one round back. And this is the full eco for FaZe. I'll say full, Rops has invested in a deagle, so there's something for FaZe. They're gonna gather up outside of B at the moment. Look to do as much damage as they can to this G2 economy. It's gonna be rather difficult to do so. Rops leads that charge down through the lower tunnels. Hunter lies in wait. This could be a big round for Hunter to farm some kills. Yeah, confidence round. He sees him jump across, willing to take that challenge. Crosses back over towards the B bomb site. No commitment yet from FaZe. Mm -hmm. Just toying with him at the moment. You know, Rain goes through that mid door. Brokey with him. Hunter is coming down to cover it off now, but they swing together and they overwhelm him. Now Stewie in from behind the double doors. It's Monacy with his double kill. Queen, well, clean and quick. Stewie gets the follow ups. A lot of money made in this round, and it's all tied up, seven apiece. And recovers the M4 to pass over. Nicely done from Stewie at that B-bomb site. We'll see if FaZe have any kind of a plan to challenge and test Stewie throughout this half. Good shooting from Monacy to help out, but Stewie's not going to let him get close to the bomb site. Monacy now up to 17 kills. Mm, looks like we might have another tech issue here. Carrigan having a chat with the admin behind him. Hopefully it's not a significant one, such as mouse being broken. And then we can resume this action. Well, it's been, I mean, it's been interesting. It's good to see. We mentioned kind of FaZe being, being the favorites in this, and that there's a, there's a world in where this could have just been straight up a beatdown, a blowout with FaZe on a stage, G2 with the stand-in looking a little rocky, uh, uh, subbing in a, a new IGL for the tournament, a Nico. Uh, but, I mean, the fight back has been impressive from G2. Still seeing some good things. A pretty decent T side. If they don't slip on the eco round, yeah. you know, they could be in the lead right now. But FaZe are the most entertaining team in Counter-Strike, Jason. It doesn't matter True. if they're going to be the team that should win the game there. They're going to they're gonna make it exciting regardless. They're going to make it interesting. They always, they always do. There seems to be an issue with ROPS at the moment. Well, they're persistent. Somebody 
somebody get these guys beer. It's day one. This is going to be an issue. It's, it's drinking time. It's what? It's 5 p.m. That's fine. It's always happy hour in Texas. Seven to seven, all tied up as we resume this action. FaZe will have the purchase available on this T side. Plenty of utility around it as well. And for G2, four M4 is one MP9. Opportunity for the aggressive long P for FaZe. And Nico is applying pressure. He's got close to those doors. And they're gonna make sure no one from FaZe is playing anywhere near long. Yeah, they're getting deep cave control right now with that second Molotov coming in, seeing if they could catch anyone from FaZe stepping behind the box. Nico leaves Nexa parked as the anchor towards long A, moves over towards middle. FaZe spread out in a default and just now starting to move towards mid. Smoke into the mid doors. Nico searching for information, listening out to hear her jump up. The rain is certainly going to jump up in behind Carrigan. But Nico is going back over to the B bomb side instead. They're stacking the wrong side of the map. Robs is doing a decent job with this lurk smoke just trickling on out. G2 a bit pretty hard on this B play. I, I, yeah, it seems like they're reading that this is going to be a mid to B split. And actually, it, it, it might be. be with the way things are lined up. FaZe can still call themselves out of it over towards Catwalk, but leaving Nexo alone at long, even leaving Modesty at car on his own as well. Three players heavy into the B bomb site. If FaZe go elsewhere, if the, they go to the A bomb site, it's just got to be a save. So, but, oh no, but the smoke's coming in for CT. It's going to be a B split. This is a perfect maneuver for G2. They've got three players in this B bomb site. They have the perfect positioning to stop FaZe in the final 25 seconds of this round. Nico pops up and he starts to clean up. A couple from the back of the car. And now G2 realized there's more than usual inside of this B bomb site. Rops is coming on in. He'll clear out the back of the car, but Nico doesn't stop. And this in game leader battle of Nico versus Carrigan, it's Nico that makes the better call in this round. That's a sick read from Nico to park himself. Big risk, but you get all the reward. Modesty able to handle the drop, so Carrigan can't be a distraction. And yeah, just way more at the B-bomb site than FaZe bargained for. And G2 have a one-round lead. And now it gets more difficult. Oh, Carrigan, he gets that shot on the cross. Stewie, his backside's ripped open. Carrigan might go in for another here. If he does, if he re-peaks, Monacy was waiting with the AWP. He'll re-peak with his own flash being set up here. Monacy, Hunter closed doors, rain will fall. Rops responds quite swiftly. Okay, can now be picked up here from Monacy. He's thinking they're going to test the smoke. He's thinking because he had an op, someone was going to come through. Oh, almost had the timing. Making sure the guns are preserved and nothing can be recovered. So keeping phase on just pistols. You don't want to let any of those weapons fall into the hands and Rops is searching for it, but he's not going to be able to find it. A minute 10 seconds left, still time. And FaZe are going to start climbing up short again. Transferring utility over to Nico as well, so he can keep Catwalk blocked off for the moment while keeping Modesty's eyes on middle. It's quiet on the map. Nexa and Stewie have seen nothing this whole round. Carrigan. Oh, he gets absolutely destroyed from the peak of Monacy. Monacy shows he can do it on the AK comfortably. Rops is forced away with that low health. He can't peek into the doors again. And Nico, powerful position to deal with these pistols as they attempt to get a bomb plant out of this situation. Yeah, Nexa's coming back now as well, which is nice because this can still be a little bit dangerous if Nico somehow misses a shot if they hit a 1D gun, but they ain't looking. The Molotov pulls their attention away, and now it's just Brokey and Rops on a lurk. And neither of those things are going to work too well. Nothing left to do for Rops but die. And he needs to die. Yeah, he does. Nexa will take him out at range. And this is a G2 that are now in the lead versus FaZe by two rounds. I do love that sign. It's a fantastic <laughs> sign, both sides of it. It's a double whammy. That, that is pretty good. It's got a reversible signage to it. And that, that's creative. Nine to seven, though. Monacy with his AWP on the CT side. Brokey finally getting it going on the T side here. This could be a very intriguing off battle. And Brokey's going to have to look through middle. Smoke is up, so canceled out. Has to change his position. 
And Nico's back to a pressing long. He's been pretty good at just locking them out of this area so far. It, it looks like they want to get aggressive, though, and you have to be really, really careful. You don't necessarily you need to. Lose members. Your defense has been solid, and yeah, Nico backs away from it, so they're going to leave Nexa there again. They decide against the aggression. That's coming in the form of utility down towards Xbox, and Rain eats a ton of damage. Monacy has his scope at short, and what a game he is having. 19 and 9 at the moment for Monacy. Minute left. Faze start to position themselves again for what is meant to be a fake out for the B split, but this time they're committing short and they're going to walk right into Monacy and that shot it connects. Rain is down. It turns out the most fearsome force of nature in a storm is the lightning and that shot connects without problem. Brokey and Frozen are locked out of this round. 40 seconds still to go, but Faze just don't have the map control. They don't have the numbers. And G2 are about to get to double figures. Brokey's about to walk into two players waiting for him. And Monacy is not missing in this quarterfinal. Frozen is left. And he'll do what he can. But with 25 seconds and the bomb down short, it's not going to be a round win for Frozen. It is 10 to 7 for G2. FaZe have not put a round on the board yet in this second half. G2's defense is so solid. Frozen's going to cross over to railing. Monacy's out in the open, but he's going to nail it. Oh my god. Third kill for Modesty in the round, and G2's up by three. This is a tough one now for Carrigan to try and figure out because you don't have many rounds to play with anymore. You don't have money in this to get a full purchase. So you're looking at what half by situation coming up here. Tech nines, a little bit of armor sprinkled in. You're likely to concede an 11th against G2, and from then on, it needs to be perfect for the T side if FaZe want to take Dust 2. And you think back to that first half, it is clutches for G2. We said it in the group stages. Guys, relax here a little bit, okay? Just silence right now for FaZe. But we said it in the group stages that G2 are winning a lot of the games based on like little individual moments that you didn't believe would be replicable. And, and then suddenly Nex is clutching in the stage as well. And Monacy's hitting some ridiculous last second clutch once again. It, it has shades of that opening game versus Falcons. And G2 could take map one versus FaZe. And they've done it looking good as well. These initial defensive setups, FaZe have had, have had a trouble like getting the, the main thrust, the first thrust of their attack, any success. They get stopped cold on catwalk, stopped cold in a mid to B split attempt by a good rotation from Nico. G2 is reading the game very well. You can see Nade stockpiled in CT spawn for Nico. The grenade is going to land on three players for FaZe. Good damage done from Nico. That'll soften them up. FaZe would love a bomb plant out of the situation, so they smoke up short. They send Carrigan in, but he gets absolutely annihilated. And you're talking about that stockpile of utility. Well, Nico is using it extremely effectively. FaZe have dove down, though, under the scope of Monacy. And that shot lands right between his eyes, straight through that scope itself. And they are going to get a bomb plant here, FaZe. They could get even more out of it. Nico tapping away, recovers that kill on Frozen. And now Brokey and Rops looking to pull this round back for FaZe. And this round would mean so much if they were able to pull it off. Rops has got a headshot on Stewie, and suddenly we're looking at a 2v3 situation. Nico climbs up on top, and you're talking about a better second half. Well, Nico is on fire. He's on for the ace right now. Yeah, he's put what? I mean. 10 kills in the second half, maybe 11 kills in the second half. He has come alive on the CT side. And G2 is two rounds away from taking the first map in these quarterfinals. But once Nico arrives and Monas, he's having a game like this. G2 become a very scary team, even without their full roster, even without their in-game leader. And we've seen that Nico's hanging in there, man. He's made some sick calls so far in this map. And they're going with four players towards long right now for G2, and Rain's out first. Molotov flashes all in his face. Rain not in a comfortable spot, but they leap right through. And that's Nexa taking Rain out of play. Robster to respond. It's two for two. And yet again, we're even. 
Modesty's here. He just arrived, and Hunter catches one more, and that's actually all the danger. Modesty can slide back because Kerrigan's making a play, but Stewie's got eyes on it as well. Not any longer, and the B bomb site's been opened up. Finally, FaZe have a real chance at putting a round on the board. Yeah, this whole B side of the map is completely up for grabs. That's the risk to G2 run with putting four players at A long early. And we know how difficult it can be to retake this B bomb site. But if they can catch Kerrigan, if they can find him around these doors, then there's a way back into it. But Kerrigan's positioning is absolutely perfect. And Modesty is not allowed to retreat. FaZe will find an eighth round and some life left in them here on Dust2. Yeah, there's a little bit of strength in that for FaZe. is creating some chaos, creating so much pressure out towards long with those two kills and allowing your individuals on the other side of the map to make what play seems to make the most sense at the time. And Kerrigan just sliding out middle is able to crack Stewie in the face and open it all up. Rain is committing towards the long fight again. He's first up. Could be a similar result for Rain. He's down to 27, but at least he's standing this time. So, not the ideal situation to find himself in. But Hunter, oh, this could be big. If he catches Carrigan around that corner, Hunter has the cleanest first shot, but recovers it to take down the in game leader of FaZe. Well, the forces of FaZe move out long. They've really got no other options now, Jason. They don't have mid, they don't have short. No, you're kind of stuck in this position, and you can put up the utility. You're going to kind of try and fake out a little bit of counter nades oh from this, goodness. and you can re-smoke it later, but it's not going to be easy. Stewie's, and Stewie's already pushed up into upper dark, so he's saying, nobody's here. Nobody's outside the B-bomb site. They have all the information, G2. So another heavy stack towards the correct side of the map for G2. Rain has been damaged, and there's not a lot of utility here for FaZe. The smoke for the cross. Monacy is cancelled out from the site itself. The FaZe are getting ever closer, and they haven't quite detected how many G2 players are currently in position. Nice shot from Rain on that jump up, but it's all G2, baby, with these kills. Two to put them further in to the better position in this round. It's just Robs, and they can't stop this G2. This is 12 rounds, and this is surely dust two. No bomb plant for the side of FaZe Clan. Robs will be a little tight on cash, a limited utility on a few players here and there. But this is a G2 that have come to play in this quarterfinal, and are now staring down the battle, or the barrel rather, of a very quick dust two victory. A convincing Dust 2 victory. 7-1 to one run in this second half for G2 since they've switched sides. Brokey's gonna try and give him an opening. Oh, He'll he challenge. Might. He'll challenge. Nate goes past him. Second one comes in. Spots one on platform. Oh, he can't get out. He's lost his play and Hunter peaks. So what's the response for FaZe? You lose your risky all peak towards the B bomb site. And now you go short with a flash. Rain to lead this charge. And he hasn't been finding the most amount of success off of his place as the spear of phase. And Carrigan goes through the middle, barrel spotted, Hunter brings him down with ease. And suddenly it is just three players remaining for phase clan. And they've got a challenge into the flash himself. 24 kills from Monacy, dinked up. And Nico is there to assist him from down lower. FaZe are not getting into this round. They are not going to be able to find success because the flank of Hunter's through. And G2 cut through FaZe on Dust2. Map one of the quarterfinals. And this unexpected run is into a sprint. Wall, nobody could find success from FaZe. Let's see how that fares on a new map. Dooley's on Modesty, Dooley's on Hunter. The map pick of FaZe begins with multiple players heading outside. That squeaky door blown open. Nico peeks it for information. And Nico wants to get around the smoke, use it as cover. Perhaps he can disrupt this pistol round early for that of his opponents. Stewie 2K from heaven, spotting the outside cross and multiple phase players. He's dinked down to one health. Instantly off the back of these initial fights, but it's Nico who is stopping on these CT halves. It's another double. 
It's time to open up the pistol. Those are huge headshots together. Stewie been forced back. He's got one HP. That was information. That was map control for FaZe until Nico just rips it out of their hands. In a mid-round piece of aggression, Monacy and Nexa coming up from secret, wrapping. Timing could be perfect. The range and the Jewel Beretta is fighting heaven with the Jewelies. Ain't the easiest position to be in here for Monacy, but he still lands that gush. He's got some cover to keep going back into here at Secret, and Monacy able to finish them off. It is so ridiculous, the mechanical skill that this young man possesses. And that is G2 with the pistol round off the back of some spectacular headshots from Monacy and Nico. If you want to start building some belief and confidence within the team, that's a good way to do it out of a map one victory. And now the second map pistol round. Look at this from Nico. He just sees the hole being blown open into the smoke, returns fire. The second one is perfect. And if G2 are going to beat FaZe today, they will need the two sharpest tools that they've got in Nico and Monacy. And so far, both are firing on all cylinders. Well, the crowd call them honorary Americans for the tournament. We've adopted a new team. Rain at red box outside, Deagle in hand. Full buy from FaZe, armor and upgraded pistols. And it looks like they want to be able to split that lower bomb site. Three players grouped up towards ramp room. A couple going to try and cross towards secret. Ray, or Kerrigan, excuse me, is going to be a lurk outside. Nico caught rain. It's a good start here to break down this force buy from FaZe in this ramp room setup between Monacy and Nexa. Monacy can take one and peel away. Unable to be clean on it, so he's sticking around until he gets that one and he gets away with a double thanks to the team kill assist from Brokey. Nexa peeks out, the distraction sets him up with an easy one. And Carrigan now in lobby, we'll see what he can do. Try and prevent the clean sheet against G2, but uh, it doesn't look too likely. He's cleaned up by Hunter. And that is the idyllic start here for G2. I, it's the nightmare start for FaZe. A complete investment and you get no kills. You get absolutely nothing out of that investment and that's so painful. Two to nothing and a great chance for G2 to build up the scoreboard, build up some money, and make themselves comfortable going into the gun rounds. Yeah, starting 3-0 down, tough scenario here for FaZe. They would not like to see a downturn in the results in CS2. I think we've kind of been spoiled with expectations when it comes to a team like FaZe, right? It's just their consistency of being at the top for such a long period of time and always being in that conversation. But this round suddenly reopens the conversation because FaZe bursts through. They've got two kills. They find themselves ahead on the player count right now. Certainly not in weapons. And Nico makes sure that this one doesn't get out of hand towards outside. Doesn't want to get involved in that silo fight. He's lost quite a bit of his health here, Nico. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He knows he was actually going to clear red box for a little bit before he got tagged up. So a little bit of space created for Brokey, and he's slipped the net. They have no idea he's down in secret. We'll see what he can do with this kind of a position. Frozen back towards lobby. Under a minute as Frozen now enters lobby with the bomb on his back. Brokey clearing over towards control room. Nico, will he look the right way? Could be caught here by the Deagle of Brokey. One shot and it's enough. Right through the glass, right through the eyes. And Nico hits the deck. Faze open up a chance now. Nexa going down the vent. It's going to be risky right into Brokey's Deagle. And he's keeping them distracted. He's keeping them pinned. And Faze now move in together. Brokey even gets away. And it's going to pull Nexa into Rob's the Tech 9 waiting. And Faze are about to pull off a round with pistols alone. Oh, Monacy just comes right back in it again. And it's just Brokey on the other side. Monacy he is so hard to go up against him once again. He could pull off a ridiculous clutch to push G2 into that 3-0 territory. And oh my goodness, why not? Monacy with another one. Another clutch versus face. Toying with them. 1v3, an awkward 1v3 for Monacy. Yeah, it looked like you know, FaZe have found the position there to, to get the round win. And then Monacy somehow is able to double up so quickly in this position. Just enough damage to catch Frozen before he gets around the back of that cylinder. And then Monacy sinks that final kill. This kid is so clutch. But there's four losses taken, four rebuys for FaZe. That's not ideal. A good round, or four rebuys from G2. A really good round from FaZe. They weren't expected to even be in a position to win that round. Modesty's got the AWP. He dropped the M4 over to a teammate. 
He's going to have that trying to peer over the smoke, see if there's anyone at the top of red box looking for a pick. Him and Nico watching outside, but the secret cross is available. And FaZe is going to take full advantage. Oh, oh great usage. Breaking up in that smoke, Harrigan getting taken down by Nico, who just about gets behind the wall before Frozen is able to take him out in reply. No utility for phase left. Couple flashbangs, no smokes to readjust on the map. No smokes to get anyone to be able to cross to meet up with Rain, who's made it over to secret. And no one from G2 has rotated downstairs to address that just yet. But the bomb is stuck outside, so phase have to come up with a solution. They've got 55 seconds. Rops waits in hot. Rain prowls lower. This kill goes the way of G2. It is going to push them further and further into the favorable spot. Rops needs to win this fight for FaZe. Does so as he peeks towards the back of the bomb side. That's Hunter out of there. And with 30 seconds left, Stewie off the top height, off the top rope, slams down the hammer on Brokey and Frozen, and Rops can do nothing about it. And that makes Taz a very happy man. G2's being very proactive that round on the CT side as well. In the five on three, they start double pushing ramp. Not needed much at the end of the day. A good double kill from Stewie, patient on top of the hut. And four to nothing, an early timeout used by FaZe. FaZe one map down already. Very convincing showing from G2 on Dust2, able to take that map without allowing FaZe to push into double figures. The T side has been very weak so far today. And they've got to start winning rounds real soon if they want a competitive game here on Nuke. Otherwise, this could end up being a historic moment for G2. And there is that conversation about playing without pressure, Jason. We've seen even last year in Dallas, we knew Malice was a dead team. They made it all the way to the final throughout the playoffs. There is something to be said about playing with a lack of pressure and expectations dipping. And there's very few teams who, who can experience, you know, what G2 has to do is play with pressure every single event. This has been a weight off their shoulders, rush towards the upper bomb site. Let's see how this defense holds. Good utility. Frozen's got the first. Yeah, Frozen runs in with that attack. Stewie is taken out in response, but here it goes down lower. Nico's grenade chasing after Rain, and it catches him just in time. So FaZe leaping towards lower, trying to get that bomb plant, and it just isn't going their way. So no extra cash picked up yet. Nico had to have been starting in secret, choosing to play the round to start at secret stairs because he was there so quick. I don't think yeah. FaZe expected that kind of a fight. Awkward, awkward engagement. We're just going to forget we ever saw that. Yeah, we didn't see that, Jason. That was non-existent. No Robs will step up, but will likely be stomped out. A 5-0 start for G2. Monacy primed with the sniper towards control room. You know, hell of a performance from Monacy on Dust2. Now, we talk about maybe some of the trophies that G2 won last year, so it was incredible, but this year it's been much quieter and we expect Monacy with the kind of form he's in, we'd love to see him be in positions to lift more trophies. Here in Dallas, man, if they take down FaZe, this is a team that, you know, it, this this is the litmus test, right? This is, if you, if you can beat FaZe, you can Pretty much beat anybody. Maybe, maybe bar, okay. bear spirit. That's what you want to go with, sure. <laughs> maybe not dog. Well, Rops is okay. That's a quick turn from Odyssey. Takes the dink and then takes his life. Uh, five five to zero. nothing. Another buy coming in for FaZe. Still struggling to find success on this T side so far. Yeah, you're expecting the rotation to be coming down ramp. You're not expecting it to be all the way up that close on the rafters at that angle. Yeah, Nico's happy about that one. Well, back to the buy here for FaZe Clan. Maximum loss bonus now established. And so AK-47's out for everybody. They've got to start winning rounds right now. We've talked about Rain and how good he is outside. One of the best players in the world and managing the outside area but it's Rops who the same can be said about these door pushes he gets out he attacks into the upper bomb site and he walks away with another Nico fighting back as he has many a time but this is much better from FaZe Clan much more solid and Stewie's left on the upper bomb site alone and there's so much time so FaZe can just slow this down hit the brakes and pause and maybe, maybe a little bit too proactive and too quick trying to crunch on that upper bomb site from G2 
pushing ramp room on the defense. Everyone falls away, and FaZe knows Stewie's the upper bombsite player. They're going to avoid it altogether, go elsewhere, and he's got an awkward 1v3 to put together. He's got plenty of utility. Yeah, he does have a lot of that, but it's does gonna he have be, a big chance? It's going to be hard to find the kills. Yeah, that is the problem, retaking this lower bombsite. So many angles you've got to worry about, but if he puts the Molotov in place towards Frozen, that would be a free kill instantly. Biggest problem is no smoke to put on the bomb to apply pressure, and he can't find that kill in the open. Brokey slides out. First round for FaZe. Good round from Rops. And he's starting to get a little bit more aggressive on this nuke T side. We saw him hold the angle and hut towards the upper bomb site, find Hunter a couple rounds sure. back. Now he's being proactive outdoor. That's a good fight from him, waiting for the follow up heat from heaven as he saw the shoulder. All attention drawn towards the upper bomb site, and FaZe exploit the extremities. timeout for G2 to go through it and I mean I was listening to the interviews ahead of this matchup from Nico and the expectations that I got from that interview was that yeah we just hope it's a competitive game versus FaZe I think we've done enough to make it competitive a close game I don't think they'd be expecting it to be one map up in this series already and now leading 5-1 on FaZe's map pick of Nuke the nice thing about it is that situation where if you're G2 you start to truly believe that you can do it, especially when you get such a hot start on Nuke, if they can continue that. It's five to one. FaZe starting to move towards outside. Getting into those outside fights early. Frozen's up on top of May. Nico has just been so good at cancelling out some of the effectiveness of these FaZe players outside. Rain in particular has struggled to combat with Nico. Hunter. He's going to check for Rops. This is the play Rops makes all the time. In fact, he made it just a few rounds prior, in fact, in the last one. So he's stopped by Hunter. Rops is dead first. Nico blinded towards the back of the garage, but he gets behind the box. Rain surely clears up with timing to look away. Nico peeks out, takes Rain out once again, but he's got a call to G2 that there's some space open. There's something you need to worry about, and that is hell to heaven. Brokey has the bomb. That's the bomb, and it's given on over to Nico. Yeah, so this heaven play might not actually matter from Kerrigan. Brokey, the only player in position to try and take care of Nico, and that's a disaster. What However, do you do now? But if Kerrigan can open something up, there's only there's two kills available. Oh, he's going to slide out. He sees both. Oh. But he can't handle Hunter. What a snapshot. And now Frozen sound cue made. He's made the drop on down. Nico gets the perfect timing again, man. Nico is farming outside. What a time for Nico to show up to this level. We know he possesses this skill. We've seen it for years upon years. And there has been criticism about some of his performances in CS2, but he's up on the stage, in-game leading his squad and just farming on the CT side. I mean, this round he gets two, two kills from just pure benefit of timing of players clearing his angle and just managing to peak at the perfect moment. Big stop. Phases T sides today against G2 have struggled. One round on the board here in seven. Applying pressure towards Squeaky this time. Rops down to 51 off the grenade, landing at his feet. And dead again. Back to back rounds. Rops is dead first for face. He's usually so pivotal. I was just saying, he's getting a little bit more frisky at his plays, a little bit more aggressive. Here's Nico. Freebie on the Kerrigan. Walks right into him. Nico is just prowling these smokes. This is his domain. This is his area. And Monacy may be a little bit too emboldened with that push. He's stopped by Brokey. Face somewhat back into this round now. Nexa needs to be careful. He doesn't lose his life against Rain. Hunter's there to adjust. And Rain will fall. It's down to Brokey and Frozen to try and recover this round for FaZe. 59 seconds, perfect timing, you open up that door. And he was damn close to getting a second, but Brokey's on the hunt back, but the Hunter comes out on top. What a lovely time it would be to have a big game from Hunter. He's hit some spectacular shots. Eight and three. Good discipline from Nexa as well, not to overcommit that fight at the stairway. He does it because he knows he's got Hunter and Vets. He's like, I actually don't have to hold this off. I have a teammate down here to watch it for me. And he does so, so effectively. Everyone's having their moments here for G2. At what point does it become too much for FaZe to have to deal with? 
This T side has been crippled over the last few rounds. And Rain finally has managed to get down secret. Hasn't had the best success in doing so. And Rob slips the net and gets down the vent as well. So some positional success for FaZe early on. And they're going to gather up ramp with three. Monacy's lying in wait though. And he looks to strike right to the chest of Karajan. Second shot is so damn fast for Monacy. And he is just so clinical today. Third shot won't land, but the damage has been felt and FaZe have lost too much of that initial pack. Yeah, and even though they've gotten so much space everywhere on the map, oh. it's like, what are you supposed to do? It's a big when shot from Berkey. Modesty takes out two of your players, five on three, and now you can just be so confident. Hunter's got the bomb again. Rain and Rops down in secret. There's nothing to do but wait for Hunter to, or excuse me, Modesty to find you. It feels like the CT side is so fluid from G2 right now. Push and pull, and Monacy, no scope. Style points from Monacy, he'll go back and finish it. Gets the job done, that's a 4K. He's up to 12 kills now. The real competition is between him and Nico for who's topping the charts on G2. And Monacy knows he's playing like a badass at the moment. He's giving the crowd a little bit of showmanship at the end of it. He's feeling this off at the moment. There's no energy in FaZe. You know, this is this is Carrigan the showman. This is the FaZe side that thrives on the stage. We aren't seeing anything that's giving them a reason to, to be fired up, to feel comfortable. They are completely dampened by just the sheer force of G2 at the moment. Second timeout used for FaZe. They've got to work with this. They have, really, to be in a comfortable spot, Jason. We just say they need four rounds here. Uh, they're getting desperate. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, at this, at this point, if you're phase, you take what you can get, three, four, whatever it might be. They've only, I mean, dust two, they got one round on their T side. Five kills is the most amount of kills here for the side of phase clan, and that's Rops. I, I mean, but you, when you think about it, is they ran into Monacy's off in the previous round. He shuts you down with a double kill. Outside, where a main thrust of phase's offense has been, and always generally is on Nuke has been Nico's playground. He's been dominating. They haven't been able to find any success and the original defenders for G2 have been getting all the kills. There's no options to find frags in the mid round. FaZe are down to a half investment. They don't have enough resources to put into this one. They are focusing up for the next. Got a decent amount of utility, and these Tech Nines and the Eagles, they can be potent on Nuke. If you can get an upper bus going pretty effectively. I mean, one of the scariest rounds that FaZe actually had on this T side was with the Tech Nines. That was the Modesty 1v3 that he ripped away from them, but other than that, that round was all FaZe. Let's see if they can do it again. Smoke wall outside. Rain will activate with that, but everybody else stays focused inside. Rain has had such a tough time. He's 1 and 8 at the moment. FaZe Clan setting themselves up out the side of that squeaky door. They want Rain to be able to come through main and it's, try and crunch this A side together. Yeah, it's going to be a set piece. Rain is going to come through probably right as those smokes fade, but another smoke up towards squeak door might actually delay things, so he gets a hard job of having to survive and wait for his teammates to be ready to execute. And Nico now moves into main, which frees up Hunter to play closer towards Squeaky Tor. Brokey coming through high. Stewie dodging the flashes. He looks down. Cleans up. Double from Stewie. Finally ripped off the top. But FaZe are down to just two players. And Brokey must win here with that eagle. He's got some big shots, but the bomb plant is denied. And now Brokey's left in a 1v3 with the bomb not down. It is hard to see this happening. And Monacy is just so damn fast from heaven. 9-1 to one for G2. I don't think I've seen FaZe knocked out this hard in a very long time, Jason. No, I mean, probably not since Katowice against, against Spirit was the last time we saw them just completely outmatched. And at the moment, they've got no answers. No answers to what G2 is doing at any point in these rounds. At this point, I mean, screw answers. You probably don't even have many ideas. The best case scenario now for FaZe, which is still unlikely, is three rounds on this half. G2 playing with so much freedom on this CT side. Nico pushing up outside, looking for that opening fight towards Silo. Doesn't get the opportunity, so he will now drop off and change his position. Modesty's dumped him all his utility so he can play outside still dynamically. Allows Modesty to be mobile as he has no obligations for smokes or Molotovs. And back towards ramp room he goes on this timing. 
that it's the right position. Of course it is. And he's got the angle at the perfect moment. Rips off the head of Rumps. Oh. Traded back, but Nexa's still here. Yeah, but they're not expecting Nexa to be in this position because the initial shot from Monacy. So Nexa gets out of that with a kill, and he's still alive. Nice shot from Carrigan. Needed to hit that one if FaZe have any shot of this, but here comes Stewie. Here he comes around the back. Carrigan is considering it. But he dodges that fight. He gets around the corner towards Hell, and he'll climb up that ladder to join his teammate in Frozen to Heaven. Yeah, but Hunter's coming right back up as well. Hunt oh, no, he's down in secret. Yeah, this is an open side for FaZe. They'll comfortably plant that bomb, and now they're in a position to get a second round. Stewie's going to go down lower. Have a little look. No one's here. They now confirm that it is, in fact, that A play from FaZe. Yeah, this time they can't shut down the ramp play. G2, if they want to go for this two on three, they might as well. They've got money for the last round to rebuy whatever they want. And so even if Stewie you lose and Hunter this, are going to check it. Even if you lose it, if you do damage to the economy of phase, you, you weaken the, the next round for them. So there is a shot at it, but the time is ticking, and they never got close to the site. Hunter getting close to his right now, though. He'll begin his pounce. It's a good shot. Frozen defends off Stewie, climbing up that ladder, and that is enough now for Hunter to try and back away, but Frozen will deny that save. It is a second round for FaZe. Carrigan hits a really important shot in that ramp room on Nexa. Yeah, and, and also the, the, the recognition that you took down Modesty and Nexa in ramp room. There's likely not going to be a heaven player. The two defenders are going to be in the upper bomb site. maybe shifted down low when those kills came in, realizing the weak spot in the defense, and Carrigan makes a perfect call. That is the third T round one for FaZe in this series. They have only won three T rounds so far. It's been an absolutely horrible day for their offense. But if they want any shot of being able to pull this back and stay alive here in Dallas, a third round is required. Outside, addressed by Monacy, and just sees enough of rain. He has had a nightmare half, two kills to 11 deaths, and Monacy is just shooting everything right now. That shot connects on Carrigan. And look at Carrigan's pathing. He's just like, I can't go up against that. I can't do anything against this AWP. This is what it's been all half. It's been Nico mostly, but the switch up of the AWP catches them completely off guard. Well, now they know the AWP isn't in ramp, so they challenge in towards Nexa this time. He's changed up his position. Rob's considering it, but the timing for Nexa, he'll double up and puts them right in his back pocket. And this is a player that gains so much criticism for the G2 squad. But he has had some massive moments in Dallas for G2. And another great round here that should push G2 up to double figures to close out this first half. Frozen and Carrigan will do everything they can. This is G2 as it's designed, even with a stand-in. The engine of Monacy and Nico providing so much power. Role players stepping up when called upon. Hunter having a good game. Nexa doing a fantastic job in ramp room. And Frozen's gonna go down last. It's 10 to 2. G2 0 is looking likely. And they might just complete it after the break.
backline and the home crowd are loving this. We have got probably a few more rounds left of this game unless FaZe are about to pull a historic comeback. It turns out Stewie 2K might be the kryptonite for Carrigan. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's just he's come in and he's been he played very very well on this new only seven kills but had a couple very impactful rounds at the upper bomb site the cliche is the pistol round is oh so important phase must have it rops slight angle drops the utility trumps forward that's gonna buy time for kerrigan to rotate over but i don't know if they can hold off all five players now they come back into what's hot it's broken waiting lying in wet in fact inside of the height rops forced down to low health he has to drop back into what's hell monacy has scared him off and given so much space to g2 brokey's hit a timing though brokey's pushing lobby right now to flank out towards ramp room rops has backed off completely which leaves kerrigan isolated on his own and rops can only get the one rain inside of the side waiting for them to come over the top of heaven he keeps himself tucked away and Brokey comes back into the lobby. Nico's there to stop him and Rain can't do anything about this G2 onslaught. G2 is getting closer and closer to the semifinals. There's not enough room to lose pistol rounds in your face. And that might just break them. That might just knock out FaZe. They're what? down to a four spy. There's no other options. Kerrigan will be very familiar with this chat. I don't think anybody expected this kind of G2 performance. Many ripped them off in the group stage. Yeah, they, they limped through the group stage. Fortunate to even be in the playoffs, but boy, are they maximizing it now. A nine round lead for G2. And it's come together exactly as designed as you were mentioning, JC. You got Monacy fragging out. Nico there with Hunter. This is a scary G2 side. And things will fight to the end. But that end might be coming closer than you think. Next up, good headshot on Robs. That draws the first kill in favor of G2. Rain is going to try and stop them from running into May, but you can't stop Stewie. Hunter follows up. Now Carrigan inside of the lobby. He goes down and Brokey is left in an impossible fight. It is 12 rounds for G2. It is map point for G2. And it is semi-final point for G2. They are so close to getting this job done. An incredible performance from G2 in these quarterfinals. Massive underdogs coming in. Question marks about how they'd be able to handle FaZe. The answer has been Modesty. Another god tier, god tier series from him across both maps. Yeah, they may not be here with their in-game leader. They may not have had the greatest results. But you cannot forget that this G2 side is made up of some of Counter-Strike's absolute greatest players. Some of the sharpest stars. And Rops looking to defend this ramp play. Nexa charging towards him. They just run right through and they run all the way. G2, two kills away. They're so prepared for everything. They're so prepared for every push, every reaction. G2 with a stand-in has hit a flow state that FaZe can't handle. And that's it. G2 in the semifinals of IEM Dallas. What an incredible, incredible showing from this G2 side. They come here without their in-game leader. We all sigh as it's Nico back to the in-game leader, Judy's. And a surprise addition of Stewie being added into the team.